Welcome to Nourish IT. This is Kishore, and today we are going to continue the class declarations and member function definition. In last session, we have discussed how to declare a class. Okay. Next, in that session, I have discussed how to define a member function. Okay. In C plus plus, we can define a member function in two ways. One is within the class. Another one is outside the class when it is defined within the class okay implicitly it becomes inline member function implicitly it will become inline member function means it will expanded within the line due to this the program performance is reduced why because means uh, generally our program contains complex statements such as control statements okay when control statements are there in our program inline function expansion gives warnings due to this our program performance is reduced that's why they have given another mechanism called outside the uh, class that means we can define a member function outside the class also but uh, for that they have given one procedure now what is that procedure before going to start uh, how to define a member function first of all i'm going, going to give the class declaration now i am going to show you how to declare the class first uh, for every class we have to start with class keyword and later class name suppose here my class name is class stu now i need some data members and member functions now id and name now right now they are data members and one more thing he, here observe just there is no private public protected keywords okay here i have not used the private public protected access specifiers because of in c++ the default visibility label or access specifier is always private that means now id and name are what private members now to access this private data we should have to write at least one public member function now i am going to define a public member function now public now void read student next here watch it void read student it read it indicates what written data type which kind of written data type we are returning next function name and here semicolon is there now this part is called function declaration function declaration which is also called function prototype next now here i want to access this data through the function now function declaration completed brackets close now the thing is in function we are having three parts one is what function declaration second one calling and third one is what definition now we have completed only the function declaration part we have finished only the function declaration next how to define the member function just before we have discussed we can define the function in two ways one is what within the class another one is what outside the class now how to define a member function within the class now i will show you defining a member function within the class now topic is very simple here semicolon i am going to place now just uh, remove this semicolon now remove the semicolon and uh, start the programming like this now just enter like this c out enter and body suppose later i will give you clarity next uh, semicolon now watch this here function header body both are completed within the class means inside the class now it is called function definition inside the class okay here what is the problem with this one because of when it is defined inside the class it will become inline member function okay due to that what happens implicit line expanding is conducted means function is expanded as a inline function due to this performance decrease that's why they are recommending they are recommending to define the member function outside the class now i will show you 
how to define a member function outside the class. For this, uh, they have given one syntax. Now, what is the syntax? Means, how to define a member function outside the class? Here, I am going to show you. Just watch this. First, uh, return type. Okay, when the definition is outside, first we have to start return type. Next, as usual, class name here. It is the most important thing. Okay, as usual, we are using function name. Generally, in a function, function definition, we are going to start with function name. But here, we should have to start with a class name. Next, colon, colon. Now, colon, colon, which is familiar with the name scope resolution operator or scope operator. Now, it is called scope resolution operator or scope operator. Next, the function name and any arguments are available then arguments. Now, the function body, it is the syntax to define a member function outside the class. Whenever you are going to define a member function outside the class, you should have to follow this syntax. First one return data type, later that class name colon colon function. Now, here colon colon indicates colon colon indicates the function on its right side belongs to the class on its left side. Okay? Here colon colon indicates this function belongs to this class. Generally, scope means what? To whom it belongs. Generally, scope meaning is to whom it belongs. Now, it says this function belongs to this class. Now, your compiler is getting one idea that means what this function belongs to this class. That is why compilation directly searching in this class means that class. Okay. It is how to define a member function outside the class. Now, I am going for practical. Okay. I am going to implement this concept here. How to implement this? Now, watch this. I am going to define the member function outside the class. Then, first of all prototyping brackets close semicolon. Actually, this part is called function prototype or function declaration part. Now, the definition is outside. That is why here first we have discussed that first we have to go for return type that is why void okay, void return type and uh, this function belongs to which class student class that is why first student class name later scope operator that is why here now it indicates what this member function belongs to this class which member function read student that is why read student now the function body that is all. Now, this one indicates what read student is the member of student class. Now, colon colon indicates read student is the member of student class that is all. Now, it is the function definition outside the class next. Now, the third part is function calling for this uh, we have to discuss about the object. Now, I am going to start object. Now, see this object. For example, here there is a class there is no doubt and how many classes are there only one class and it contains one id one name means generally we are calling variables when it is a class we are calling data members. Now, the point is suppose I have declared int a comma b. Okay. Now, generally a comma b are called what variables and which kind of variables means what integer type variables because of a and b are declared from integer data type. And now, actually here three integers are there int, int a, int b means what a, b are the copies of int na? Now, one int original copy, it is the original copy, a is one of the copy and b is one of the copy. That means, 
total how many items are there? 3 items, but the point is we are not able to use int anywhere in our program because of it is the original. Next for that we should have to create the copies of int. Now, what they are called integer variables like that here also, okay. here also we are having one class. Now, we are not able to directly use the class members that is why we should have to generate class variables, we should have to generate class variables. For example, stu is the class name, next s1 comma s2. Now, what happened? S1, S2 are the copies of which one? STU original class. That is why STU is the class here and S1, S2 are called copies no? and technically they are called objects. Technically they are called objects. That is why objects are nothing but instances. Okay. Objects are nothing but instance of a class, instance means what? Copy, okay. that is why here important thing, here whenever one class is declared, you should have to define the objects of same class, then only memory also allocated, then only memory also allocated. How it is possible? Just watch it. First, uh, I am going to show you why we need the objects in our programming, simple thing. Just before we have discussed int, actually how many ints are there? Only one. For example, int equal to 100, actually it is allowed, nothing doing because of int is a data type, okay, int is a data type and there is no instance for int and we are not able to use the directly, means uh, we are not able to use the data type directly like this. That is why we have to create the copies. Now, from int we are declaring a comma b. Now, what happens a b two memory locations are created and they are going to take uh, how many bytes? Two bytes. Now, watch it here int is there, a is there, b is there. Actually, six bytes required now, but it takes only four bytes because of a required the memory, b required the memory and int does not require. Means, int never takes the memory, but a and b are taking the memory. In my example, int is the class, a and b are the objects. Okay? Here, int is the class, that is why class is a logical copy, that is why class is a logical copy and objects are the physical copies class is a logical copy and objects are the physical okay as usual logical imaginary physical real that's why objects required memory class doesn't require memory that's why we are saying whenever the objects are created then only memory also allocated for data members that's why without objects there is no class okay, except in static member accessing. That is why here compulsorily you have to declare the objects. That is why total program is going on objects. That is why C++ is called object oriented programming language. Next, now it is why we need the object. That is why an object is instance of a class means copy of a class. Second one is what? An object is the Okay. An object is the variable of type class, watch it, here we are, we are saying what a b is the variables of type what integer, then suppose stu, stu is here what class, then s will become variable, no? that is why another definition for object is what, okay. another definition for object is what, it is a variable of type class. Next, here class never takes memory, but objects, yes, that is why I said classes are the logical copies and objects are the physical. That is why another definition, an object is nothing but physical representation of a class. Like this, we are having several definitions. Uh, now, okay, 
we have discussed what is a what is an object and why we need the object in our programming and how to define a object. That is why to define an object first we have to create the class name letter space letter object ok. It is the syntax of a object that is why first class name space object 1 object 2 and so on. It is how to define the objects of a class. Now, suppose here I am going to write main function for example. Now, s t u s, s is what object. Mm. Now, what happened when object is defined, okay, when object is declared, the memory is created now. Now, for example, it is our system stack. Now, what happens? S yes, is the copy of student. Student is having what ID and name. That is why here ID, here name, and it takes 2 bytes memory and it takes 20 bytes memory because of here ID is integer and the name is 20 characters construct. Okay, that is why here total object size is 22 bytes and they are created with the name yes because of object name yes. And now, I want to access this then how to access id and name are what private data members. Actually, the rule is what we are not able to access the private data due to data hiding concept. Then that is why they have given the remedy now what it is member function that is why you have to call the read student member that is why here I am going to include read student also read student that is why read student is a what public member when it is public member it is going to interact with uh, private data then that is why clrscr later s dot read student now program close ok. Here read student is the member of S that is why when it is member they are recognized with dot operator now because of dot means member access operator, member of operator, field access operator, membership operator belongs to operator we are calling with several names now. Now the dot indicates what read student is the member of S object that is why now this part is called calling now this part is called calling now watch this it is what function declaration and uh, this one is what function definition and this one is what function calling now the three topics are covered now the so every function is having three parts function declaration function calling function definition and right now they are discussed okay it is how to call the member functions and how to define a class. Okay. Thank you for watching.